Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions, my name's Chris and today we're going to be checking out the ingenious Freestyle 2 900 megahertz based cordless phone solution. That is a mouthful. So this is the same ingenious that has network switches and access points and all sorts of other products. This is their ultra range wireless or cordless phone solution. Now typically when we're talking about cordless phones on this channel, we're talking about decked cordless, we're talking about Wi-Fi phones, this is neither of those technologies. This is 900 megahertz. And if you guys have watched this channel for some of the 900 megahertz point to point stuff that we've done, we know that 900 megahertz has a very good ability to go through walls and trees and obstructions. And so this is sort of the same concept. This is a phone that works on 900 megahertz that has range, extreme range, of about 25,000 square feet, uh, or about half the size of my house. They also say that it can go up and down through about a six-story building. I assume that means that the phone base would be located somewhere in the center of a six-story building, and it can go all the way up or all the way down. Another place where I see this being very useful would potentially be something like a construction site where you have to be all over the place on a big you know, piece of property. So let's go ahead and get this phone taken out of the box. We're also gonna talk about some of the specifications. Uh, I did say that it covers six floors or 25,000 square feet. It works on 900 megahertz, uh, which means that it has penetration through concrete and wood and drywall and all sorts of stuff like that. Now this is not a SIP based phone. This is an analog phone, meaning that you have to plug it in, uh, plug a POTS line directly into this phone, or you can use an ATA, uh, an analog telephony adapter, to get the phone connected to your existing voice over IP PBX, something like the Grandstream HT802. All right, so we've got some literature. We have a notice that say Freestyle 2 handsets are backwards compatible with Freestyle 1 equipment, so if you have that, read me first, etc., etc. Here's the quick start guide, we'll take a look at that. Inside the box we have, this looks like a handset. There we go, so here is the first handset. Let's go ahead and take this plastic off. Beautiful. Now I talked about this being good for like a construction site, but keep in mind that these are not sort of rugged phones that are meant to be outdoors, right? So if you did have this on a construction site, you'd wanna keep it relatively protected from inclement weather. So speaking of these handsets, you can have up to nine of these handsets on a single base station. The MSRP on the base station is 349 bucks, and the MSRP on individual handsets, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I will put that down on the bottom of the screen here somewhere. Okay, so now we have the base. All right, so we have a nice big antenna as well as the base. Let's pull the plastic off this one. Beautiful. And then also inside the box, we've got a base station for charging the phone. Let's pull the plastic off that one. Beautiful. All right, so that phone goes on there. Uh, we have a belt clip for the phone. This is a power adapter. This is probably for either the phone or the base. I'm gonna guess that one's for the phone and the bigger one is for the base. And these are both five volt, one amp power adapters. So it looks like they're interchangeable between the base or the handset. We got the battery for the phone. Let's go ahead and pop that in here. Whoa, there we go. Let's see if it comes with any juice. How do we turn this thing on? So I don't see a power button. It looks like the battery doesn't have any juice. So let's go ahead and get that plugged in so we can start charging it up. And then finally in the box, we have an RJ11 phone cord. I've got a million of these, don't need it. First, I'm gonna plug in the handset so that we can get it charging. All right, and that says charging. Now let's plug in the base station. This base station is wall mountable. They have hooks for wall mounting right here, although I don't believe it came with any screws for wall mounting, at least I didn't see any in the package. Uh, then we have power, a factory reset button, and then we have a telephone and a line. So two RJ11 jacks on the back here. Line is where you're gonna plug in a POTS line or where you're gonna plug in your ATA to connect this to your voice over IP PBX. And then tell is for if you have some sort of pass-through device such as an answering machine. Wow, this is charge complete. <laughs> so maybe the battery did have charge and it just wasn't working because I didn't have it on the base or something, I'm not sure. 
All right, even though this says charge complete, I think it's lying to me. I'm gonna leave this on the charging base for just a little while, maybe an hour or two, and then I will come back and see if I can't get this thing powered up. As far as the base station goes, I have a POTS line right here. We're just gonna plug that into the line port. And now the base station should be good to go. I have now let the handset charge up for a little while. Yesterday, when I was working on this, I would pull the handset off and it would immediately turn off, and then I'd put it back on and it said it had a full charge. Well, as it turns out, I'm just an idiot. So when I put the battery in, of course, I'm trying to record this video and all that stuff at the same time, uh, there's a little plastic protector on the pins on the battery that you have to remove before you put the battery into place. So I popped the back open, I saw the plastic piece, I pulled it off, put it back in, and now it's fully charged and staying on when I take it off of the cradle. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a call out to my cell phone to show that this is working properly. Send, it's going out my POTS line here. Okay, I'm getting the call on my cell phone here. Hello, hello, hello. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. Test, 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 test. Check, 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 check. check. Okay, so speakerphone there. Let me turn off the speakerphone there. Turn on the speakerphone here. Check, check, check. check. Test, test, test. Okay, so we have successful two-way audio from the ingenious Freestyle 2 over to my cell phone. Works absolutely no problem. But of course, the point of this phone is not to see if it can make a phone call. The point of this phone is the touted extreme range of this device being that it uses 900 megahertz technology. So now let's make another phone call to my cell phone, but we're going to take this thing on the road and I'm just gonna walk down the street as far as I possibly can while recording the audio from my cell phone here to see exactly how far away we can get. Okay, this is my setup here. I've got my cameras in sync. I'm going to call my cell phone and put it on speakerphone and then walk away from the house and uh, film myself as I do that. And we will see exactly how far we can go. So let's go ahead and call. Two check two. two. Check two. There, we go. there we go. Okay, so at this point, I'm about 325 feet away from my house. Hopefully you guys can still hear this audio. Let's keep going. My neighbors all think I'm a lunatic, of course, for doing weird stuff like this, but, you know, it's all for YouTube. Okay, so now I'm about 540 feet away. Uh, I don't have perfect line of sight, but I don't also have a lot of obstructions in the way either. So this should, I believe, still be working, considering there's 25,000 uh, square foot range on this device, and it's 900 megahertz. It should be able to penetrate through walls and bushes and trees and that sort of stuff. All right, let's keep going. Okay, now about 720 feet away. Again, still not line of sight, but not too obstructed either. Hopefully the sound quality is still coming through nice and clear at 720 feet away from the base station. At this point, I'm walking over to a spot that is now going to be uh, sort of going through a lot of houses and trees and obstructions. So whereas before it was relatively clear in terms of line of sight, and now I'm definitely not going to be clear line of sight when I get to this next location. Two, check two. At this point, I'm coming up on about 800 feet away. Oh, well, I've not been disconnected yet. I guess that's pretty good. Of course, I don't know what the audio sounds like on the other side, but I'm pretty far away at this point. I'm about 850 feet away at the crow fly. I'm going through this concrete wall that you can see right now through a number of Wow, it's actually working, and it sounds decent. 
your politics. I'm so crazy about the kids. So, I tried to call uh, one of my guys and it did not go through. It went to our voicemail box instead. But again, from 1,400 feet away from the base station, through all sorts of obstructions, houses and walls and all that sort of stuff, I could still make a call from this location. Now, I'm not going to go any further, but uh, I did hear the call quality sort of chopping up a little bit. So I imagine that I'm very close to the edge of the range uh, of this 900 megahertz device. All right, let's get back to the office. Final thoughts about the Ingenious Freestyle 2. In terms of range, which is really why someone would want to buy this device, I'm fairly impressed with the range. As you guys heard from the audio, it really started breaking up around 800 feet away from the base with a lot of obstructions in the way, but you could still kind of hear the audio at 1400 feet away from the base. Now, they only say that this is good for about 25,000 square feet, which if you think about that, if you had 200 feet by 200 feet, that's 40,000 square feet right there. So the fact that this thing was fine you know, all the way up to about 800 feet away from the base, I assume that it would also be fine 800 feet that direction away from the base as well. So 800 feet might be stretching it, but I'd say that the usable range of this device is probably about 500 feet away from the base station in any direction, which is much greater than 25,000 square feet. Now, I didn't test any of the additional functionality. There's a broadcast, there's an intercom, a, you know, a two-way intercom between multiple handsets. I'm sure it's got an address book. If we go through the menu here, you know, key guard, phone book, sounds, I'm sure that's ringtones and whatnot, call settings, phone settings, base settings, registration, etc. So there's all sorts of stuff to this phone. There's a lot more to it than I'm showing in this video. What I really wanted to show was the range of the device, and, and yeah, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the range on this device. I do wish that it were SIP enabled out of the box, but you know, basically if you slap a $50 ATA uh, onto this thing, you're gonna have a SIP enabled phone anyways. Now if you lose the handset, there is a page button. Let's try that out. There we go. All right, but what do you guys think about the Ingenious Freestyle 2? Where would you use a phone with this extreme type of range? Put that down in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to Crosstalk Solutions for two to three new tech videos every single week. All right, we will see you guys in the next video.